from all the comments that I read, I think that the best idea is to start a series with tips and tricks for fast LED library with Arduino to get you started with digital LEDs. So let's get into it. For the first clip, I want to show a quick over overview for connecting the LEDs, uh, the things that you should avoid and explain in my opinion the correct way to use buttons with fast LED libraries. Here is the basic schematic for this example and we have an LED strip, an Arduino and two buttons. Um, the idea is to never power the Arduino from multiple power supply because you will kill it. And this schematic is for powering when you have the sketch finished and uploaded to the Arduino because in this way you cannot communicate with Arduino. You can power up the Arduino from multiple ways. You have the 5 volt pin when you are when the sketch is already finished and uploaded to the to the Arduino and you are using one power supply to power everything the LED strip and the Arduino you have the power jack um, that uses the internal voltage regulator but you should be careful because it's not too powerful you should never power the LED strips uh, from this voltage regulator through the 5 volt pin and you have the USB powering method which allows you to upload the sketch but also control the LEDs. In this example we are powering the Arduino from USB and the LEDs we are powering from a separated power supply. But when you use multiple power supply you should uh, always have a common ground because otherwise everything will go haywire. This is the simplest way to hook a button to the Arduino by using a pull down resistor. Um, in our case 2 and 3 are used as inputs and we are keeping them to a low state by using this resistor. When we push the button we change that state to a high and we are able to detect that in software. But because mechanical switches like buttons or relays are not perfect when we switch them on or off, the signal will bounce, in some cases for, for a few microseconds. But that will be enough for the microcontroller that is really fast to be able to detect that bouncing and change our value in an unwanted state. Let's see how the bouncing looks like. Here we have the switch open and when you push the switch, your value will change more than one time because of the two metal plates in the switch that make contact and after a few milliseconds the switch will remain closed and the input will be high. To avoid this problem many people use software debouncing by simply adding a delay and when the controller detects the first change in the input state then it slows down because of the delay and will not detect the other changes and your input will become stable. But when you slow down the controller you will also slow down the animation and the animation will be ruined like we will see later on in this video. To avoid slowing down the controller and using delays you can use hardware debounce and we can achieve that by adding a simple capacitor from the ground to the input pin and when the button is pressed, this capacitor needs a little time to, uh, to charge up and will slow the input down. And after the button is released, this resistor is also used for discharging this capacitor. For hardware debouncing, you can also use a Schmidt trigger, but it's a little too much for what we need. In this simple example, the first button is used for changing the color and we have three colors red, green and blue and the second button will be used for changing the intensity of the colors. If we don't use any debouncing method, when pushed once the first button can change multiple times the colors and we don't want that. But if we push once the second button we don't care if the intensity changes multiple times but we also need to slow down the changing of the intensity. Now let's see the code. Here we include the fast LED library 
we define the type of LEDs that we are using, in our case 2812B. Uh, we define the number of strips, in our case one strip. We define the number of LEDs per strip, in our case 50. We start the instance uh, of the um, LED strips with the number of strips, 1, and the number of LEDs per strip, 50. And after that, we define the two buttons. Uh, I like to define them as constant integers uh, because they take less memory than an integer because they don't change uh, over the time in the time of the program, the program runs. Uh, the button 1 is pin 2, button 2 is pin 3. Here we define the variables for holding the button 1 and button 2 state. Button 1 value and button 2 value will hold in real time the state and button 1 state will be used like a previous state of bu for button 1. Here we define the variables for um, changing the color state and for holding the current color. Here we have the three colors that we, that we want to use, red for 0, um, green for 96 and blue for 160. Um, these values can be found in FastLED library manual. Here we define the variable for uh, holding the current brightness and by default we have 100 from two, uh, 250, 5. And in void setup we first start the serial begin uh, for debugging purposes. We define the pin mode for button 1 and button 2 as inputs. We define the output for the uh, LED strip, pin 12, for the first LED strip. Uh, because some of the um, LED strips on the market, uh, when you power them on, they start on full white, we must shut them down. So this line will do just that. We'll fill solid with black, um, all the number of LEDs, in our case 50, for LED strip 0. And then we send the command to the LED strips. And after that, in void loop, we check the button states and store them and with the first if statement if button 1 is pressed then we set a delay of, t of 50 milliseconds after that we set the button 1 state to 1 and while the button 1 is pressed this if statement will run after the button is released the else if statement will run and if the button 1 state that we set over here to 1 it's 1, then we increment with 1 the color state. We check if the color state is greater than 2 because we only need in this uh, example 3 colors and that means color 0, 1 and 2. And after that we set the color 1 state back to 0 so this function will not run anymore. After that we only send uh, some serial data for debugging. The second if statement will be for the color state. If color state equal to 0, then, color, then current color is equal to 1. And we use the first color. Um, else if the color, the color state equal to 1, then we use the second color. Current color equal to color 2. Else if color state 2, um, current color will be equal to color 3. After that, we have the third um, if statement and that is for the second button. If button, uh, button 2 val is 1, if the button 2 is pressed, then we set the delay of 50 milliseconds, we increment current, color, uh, current brightness, uh, check if the current brightness is greater than 150 because that, that is the limit that I want for this example, and if it's uh, greater than 150, we set um, current brightness to zero. After that, we print some serial data for debugging purposes, and here we have the effect. We start the effect by fading to black five times a second all the number of LEDs in LED strip zero. After that, we generate a position using bit8 function from FastLED library, which generates a number from zero to 255 and we increment that number 50 times per second. Because the maximum value generated by bit function is 255, 
which exceeds our number of LEDs, we want to map that value from 0 to 255 to 0 to 50, our total number of LEDs. After that, we run through the LED strip, we set the position for LED strip 0 with our current color, our saturation and our current brightness. After that, we send all the data to the LED strip. Now let's see this code in action and see why it isn't a good idea to use software debouncing. Let's connect the power for the LED strip. Here we have the two buttons. Ignore this. They are unconnected. Um, the first button will change the color, but if we have software debouncing, watch what happens. The color changes, but the effect is ruined. The same thing for the brightness. We increment the brightness. But the effect lags because the controller uh, slips while the software debouncing takes place. So let's remove the delays from the software debouncing for button 1 and for button 2 let's send it and now let's see what happens when I press the button there is no software delay and the color changes, but in some cases the color will jump. Uh, we have red, green, blue, but in some cases the color will jump all from red all the way to blue or all the way to red because of the bounce. To fix this problem Let's put on the capacitor for button one. And for button two. And now we have a hardware debounce. But if we remove the delay from, uh, from the second button, now the brightness increments very fast. So we must slow it down, but don't use delays. For this, we will use another function from Fast LED library and it's called every n milliseconds, which uh, works like this every 30 milliseconds, run this code, and we don't want to increment here the current brightness we will increment every 30 milliseconds. When we upload this to the Arduino and try to use it, the animation it's okay and the, bright and the brightness increments are slowed. Let's summarize. Don't use software debouncing for, bot for buttons or other delays while your animation is running. 
because it will be ruined. Don't power up the Arduino from multiple power supplies because you will most likely kill it or kill your USB port. Always use a common ground when using multiple power supplies. And don't power the LED strips from the onboard voltage regulator of the Arduino because it cannot handle big currents. Well, that's all for this video. Hope you learned something new. And if you like this video, please like, share and subscribe. Thanks.